Good morning, everyone. Can I please have a quick sound check? If you could please type a one in the chat box, if you can hear me. And also, if you could see the screen, the six charts that are being displayed right now. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a brand new trading session. This is Tuesday. It is July 21st, 2020. It is 9.20 a.m. Eastern Time. We're 10 minutes ahead of the open. And uh, we have some really pretty and really interesting price action for today's session. My name is Anka Metcalf. So welcome again to the Trade Out Loud trading room. We will begin right now. First off, economic releases. Guess what? No releases for the trading session today. That will impact the market. So we're going to navigate clear and um, pretty much eventless within the market from our regular trading events. We do have uh, economic releases this morning, and uh, we did have a plethora of releases the mor this morning. We had Coca-Cola, L&T, Philip Morris, uh, NVS, uh, uh, SNV. Uh, these are some of the names that uh, I was watching before the open. We're also having a very nice continuation and some of the names that were already in into the swing program. Tesla almost made it to $1,700 in the overnight trading session. Um, in pre-market session, I'm, I'm used to saying overnight trading session because of futures, but in the pre-market session. So uh, very nice uh, push to the upside there. That was our, our wild card. Uh, for uh, for obviously it uh, has expanded throughout all our targets and we're in management mode right now. But what a surprise in gold and we have been watching gold for a very long time. In fact, we did have one trade in gold in which we stopped out. It was totally uncalled for. And again, remember that gold is trading into very wide ranges and I should have known better and kept a soft stop. Um, and uh, that's what I intend on doing from now on. So I'm going to call a soft stop, going to call a hard stop for these type of trades that uh, represent, uh, um, you know, a, a bigger chunk of support. So definitely one of, uh, you know, a hard stop is definitely not going to do it for in this kind of velocity. So um, anyways, for today's trading session, we're waking up in profits. Uh, we have achieved in gold almost all the targets. We have one more target that is left, which is seven points away from uh, our 1843.7 high that was marked on the trading session today. Our next target is into the 1850 area. So very nice move. We've had these lines on the charts for a very long time and we have been stocking gold for a very, very long time. And finally, you know, it started to move for us. Silver is as well on fire today and it is outperforming. Oil finally made it out of the swing core breakout area. We talked about it again for a very long period of time. For weeks, it has been coiling onto the weekly chart and uh, finally, massive breakout. Again, this is the temporary shallow. This is the number one reason why when you're trading commodities and sometimes even indices, you need to have uh, a lot of wiggle room when you decide where to place your stop. Because if you would have placed it really tight, right at the support, right at the temporary support shallow area that we have marked here, and uh, definitely oil is trading off the parameters that uh, we were uh, trading yesterday. This is uh, the breakout zone. Um, and this is the number one reason why soft stops are very, very important for, uh, for our trading. All right, so let's get to work and uh, let's take a look at the futures indices right now. Uh, the Dow is up 146 points. We're having the S&P almost 20 points up uh, and uh, the Dow 147 points. Yesterday we had like 360 points up for uh, for, uh, oops, sorry about that. Change the chart here. I don't know what happened. All right, here it is, NQ. All right, and NQ is up uh, 50, uh, 50 points. And remember, yesterday it was up like 350 points or something. So it's something incredibly, incredibly uh, powerful. Uh, it is a very powerful index. And we have Russell as well that is up uh, almost 20 points uh, today. And uh, 
in terms of relative uh, you know leaderboard uh, in terms of uh, progression to the upside obviously russell leading with 1.2 percent however i'm going to show you the pattern the pattern is still into a congestion area however uh it is setting up a similar pattern with gold and oil all right so we're going to probably see uh, a massive breakout happen uh, in Russell as well and has been one of the laggards uh, this year and it has not made a new high. So uh, we're gonna take a look at the structure in a little bit. But on um, the overall structure, we're having a nice blend of solid um, um, synchronicity into the Dow, the S&P and NASDAQ, which uh, leads us to believe that today we could uh, trade uh, all of these indices uh, pretty much in sync, and we have not had that in a very long time. So what that means is that, uh, you know, if let's say, for instance, I call a trade in NASDAQ, you could definitely go and uh, carbon copy uh, the similar pattern into ESNY. But we'll see in about five minutes when we open if this is going to be in play as well. So uh, going back to uh, going back to the structure of the charts, uh, let's begin our analysis for the trading session today, and let's see what we have in store and what our game plan will be for today. So I am going to switch the screen right now. Just let me give me a heads up if you guys can see only one chart that is active right now on the screen. Okay, thank you so much. All right, so from the daily structure, we have done a very nice rotation point. This is also a very nice pullback by resistance support. Uh, we're regaining the daily 10 EMA. The last time when we regained the 10 EMA was basically back here uh, into May, and we had a very nice rally. So it is very important for price to regain the 10 EMA. The 10 EMA is what gives it the velocity and the power trend. Uh, the possibility for the power trend. So I really like the way, uh, you know, um, it is setting up here, uh, actually by eliminating this resistance that we have here, this resistance is actually coming from back in March, on March 4th, if you could see it right here, you could see where my cursor is on March 4th. And this is uh, the reason why we stalled into this area. And we had a pretty rough time you know, getting on track with the with the Dow. And the Dow also was influenced by uh, by Boeing, right? And by some laggards uh, within uh, within this index. All right, let's get back to the drawing board and see what we have here. We have a high velocity zone, 27.063. If we break below, uh, we break above this area, we're gonna skyrocket to 28,000. So we have, uh, in fact, it's 28,080. So we have about uh, a thousand points. Um, um, the doors will open towards a, a thousand point rally above this point, but we need to get there first. And how do we get there? By looking at formations that may happen at or around. Now remember that power trends are the hardest thing to trade. And that is because you don't know when you're, when the indices are gonna do a shallow pullback, you have no idea uh, how steep or how shallow that pullback is going to be. So it's definitely a lottery. So once again today, please use half of your risk and double the stop. We will, uh, uh, when we call the trade, we will incorporate that into our trading. Definitely right now we have a uh, massive support point into the 750 area. This area is going to hold, this is the confluence area. If this zone is going to hold, we're definitely going to expect the rotation back to the upside. We're going to take a look at some smaller time frame charts when we're uh, getting closer uh, to um, some kind of uh, setup. And obviously in about two minutes or so from uh, um, when we open. But definitely we're going to get more velocity once we trade over 860. 860 is resistance. Once we break above this area, we're going to have a very clear void from 860 all the way to 27,000. So we need to have a really good setup in order to take advantage of that uh, for the near trading session. Obviously, the MNE S&P very expanded to the upside. It just uh, broke above the resistance that it had into the 3230 area. 
Um, you can see the red line right now just became that resistance, now became support for price action. And we also have that support from back on um, Fe February 3rd. So on February 3rd, we were trading coiling around the same area. So uh, the price is revisiting a prior revisited area. So that's why it becomes this level of support becomes much more potent than anything else. Uh, this support zone can actually launch the price into the 33.38 and 33.40 level. This is going to be the um, this is going to be the ballpark target. But we also have the 3300, which is the overhead 3300, which is right here. We also have a resistance zone. I have not noted that. But that is coming from a weekly uh, weekly projection. All right, let's take a look at NASDAQ. NASDAQ, obviously one of the strongest back into the all time highs. And once it hit the all time high right here, I'm just showing you very quickly, <clears throat> expanding the chart here. Here's the all time high, revisiting the all time high in the overnight trading session. And pretty much you can see that uh, the price has started to come back down, right? It's heavy resistance. These are the all time highs. So, uh, where is NASDAQ going to pull back to? Well, first it had a shelf of defense into 11,020, uh, and then it has another level of support right here, right into 11, uh, right into 11,000. So we're going to have to wait and see uh, how the price is going to handle this area, and we're going to get a rotation based on this point. If not, the next pullback area is going to be actually 100 points lower into the 10,900 level. And if we're going to get the price into this area, we're going to look for a pullback buy. Definitely today, a very bullish day. However, we're still beginning today with a relatively neutral uh, bias because of the huge advancement that we had in the overnight trading session. And uh, we had as well, um, uh, and the strike that we're having right now. All right, now a very interesting pattern that we're gonna show you right now is Russell. Russell has been coiling for a very long time into this 14, uh, 1480 to 1485. Why? Well, because it's having massive resistance that is coming from a weekly chart. It has the 89 SMA, has the 50 SMA right into that location. The high velocity zone in Russell is gonna, going to be into the 1485.5. This is the high velocity zone. Anything that trades above this area, anything that trades above this area is going to launch it higher into a, uh, into a target of 1500 and 1540. So you, we have some dotted lines right here. These are gonna be the target 1500 and actually 1536 to 1540, you can see the line. So this is going to be again, a very powerful breakout. I know uh, some of you guys are still in the swing trade that uh, I mentioned last week and it was last Monday, I believe. Uh, and again, right now, the new support level is into the 1450 level. We have a very nice sideways range. If you were thinking of taking this for a swing, your entry is 1485.5, uh, so above, uh, above the 1485.5, any print 6, 7, 8, 9, but no more than that. And your stop is going to be into the 1450. Target one is 1500, target two is uh, into the uh, 1520 and 1536 to 15, uh, 1540. This is a pretty good risk to re reward ratio here, taking into, consideration, <laughs> taking into consideration that we're talking about Russell. All right, um, now let's uh, review gold because we are still in gold. And right now um, I, sent you guys, uh, uh, I sent you guys a message on our private feed uh, mentioning that you take at least half if you have not taken profits uh, into the uh, 40s, into, uh, into all of these target levels that uh, we have going on right now. Uh, I expect the price to possibly continue higher. I'm intending of keeping one lot open for further development higher. We can actually have it above that 1850. Uh, that was actually our um, um, our last target for the trade that I called last Monday. So patience is definitely what's winning the game, right? Okay, so one more CL, and uh, this is uh, what, uh, uh, you know, what we have been talking about for a very long time. Uh, last week, we talked about the range, right? This massive range that has been going on with lots of support level. You can see that we also have the 200 SMA. 
Uh, but believe me when I tell you that gold, ha uh, uh, I'm sorry, oil has a mind of its own. It has been coiling into this area for a very long time. So take a look at June, right? So we had June, July, right now we're nearing the end of July uh, and we're still, you know, we were still trading into the same spot. And like I said, short squeeze all the way into the 45 level. This is where the price is going to get sucked into. It's very easy trade for those of you that, you know, have, you know, um, the account where you can trade these kind of patterns. These are definitely going to be very profitable for you. Okay. So um, again, these, the breakout already happened 41 uh, over 4110. We discussed this yesterday, the stop again, needs to be below the $40. And obviously, uh, look at these spots that are developing here. So always look at the support level that we have on a technical chart and the width to the upside or to the downside. And you're gonna get a pretty good idea when you measure that uh, space from uh, the support level to the, uh, to the downside of this, uh, of this bar. Uh, you can see what kind of wiggle room you need to apply to these trades. And therefore, you know, add a little bit more and there you have it. So again, tie stops are not going to do the trick in this market. All right. And especially in, uh, in commodities, right? All right. I'm going to stop the screen share. We're going to go back to the six charts and we're going to try to have some patience and identify some setups uh, for the trading session today. And again, patience, again, patience, no patience, no money, easy, okay? Um, <clears throat> I have the charts here uh, onto the five minute chart. I really like Russell. I think I'm gonna call Russell um, as another potential trade. Oh yes. So Russell is gonna be along 14.85. Point seven, and the stop is going to be 14.50. And we're going to look for targets um, into 1500. Pretty clean trade, 15.20. Here it goes, guys, it triggers, it triggers. It's going to trigger, it's going to trigger. It's at 14.85.4. Okay, 1485.4 is your entry, 1485.4. It's getting very close. Okay, all right. All right, let's take a look at targets. Had to get myself in the trade as well. Okay, the next targets are going to be the Fifth, let's put 1530 because 1535 is going to be a doozy. And if it takes, uh, if it trades over 15, uh, if it trades over 1535, let's put 1535. Okay, we have 1540. And then we're going to see. So this is the. Uh, Let's see how it trades uh, for the day trading portion of it. If you want to take it as a day trade, uh, it needs to have a soft stop into 1475. So if you consider this as a day trade, the stop, well, we need to hold that zone, the 1475. Um, the stop should the 1475 area. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here's a velocity breakout point. All right, heavy divergence right now. Really heavy divergence. NASDAQ in and expansion and Russell. Expansion and Russell. Okay, if you're considering the day trading portion of it, you're also gonna have a target at 
All right. I'm taking it as a swing, so I'm not taking it as a day trade. But you could definitely take it as a day trade. It may become a little bit fleecy here because we're having such a strong divergency. Wow, NASDAQ coming in, S&P coming in. Power to YN right here. Beautiful boing with a gap up and a hitting resistance right now. Disney, daily rotation in Disney. Uh, very strong Disney here, very, very nice. Home Depot, up, up, and away. Just printed a new high, 161.89. This is good for the Dow. City financials are rotating as well, so we can watch for continuation, possibly in ES, still very early on the day. JP Morgan, daily rotation. We're also having um, very nice price action in Bank of America, so financials are getting up. Costco becoming very interesting here. And all of these names are so important for our trading. Wow, oh, Costco, gorgeous Costco right here. Okay, NASDAQ back into support. Okay, Costco is a trade right now. I just send it out to you guys. Just send it out to you guys. Yes, it's on our uh, private feed. All permanent members should have notifications enabled so you don't miss a trade. Here's the trade. Very nice price action in um, uh, very nice price action in Dow and Russell. The only trade I'm in is in, is in <laughs> Costco. <laughs> okay, yeah, obviously, um, in, uh, in Russell. Okay, I'm looking for something else as well. Uh, possibly could be into the Dow. Wow, so fast, so, so fast. Uh, targets in Costco, 132 and 135, 132, 135.
Oops, did I say 132? Let's just calculate it. Gosh, where did it go? One, oh, see, that's what happens when you're watching like 100 markets at once. Uh, 332, 332 and 335, 332 and 335. Up, up, and away, Russell. Go, baby, go. Now, if you're taking this for the day trading portion of it, you can start trailing in about two minutes or so about two minutes you have just achieved your um 92 area target see how it hit 92 look at our targets guys <laughs> that's funny okay ym ym is getting close to that velocity zone uh ym support is at 26 700 including the wiggle it has a 200 sma on the five and the breakout zone is right here 15 minute high low can be in play right now. 15 minute high low instead of that 700 stop, 15 minute high low is, well, it's 861. YM 861 can be a long. I don't know if I want to be a long this much with this divergence in NASDAQ. Um, 861 to 862. Uh, yeah, it's right on support. We should be getting a pop here. Let me put this on a higher time frame. Okay, we're back into that 900 that I mentioned. It's back into support. We need to see a rotation on the five, otherwise I'm not gonna call YM. <clears throat> Everything is happening super, super fast today. SPCE is extending gains for us. Guys, this is the hottest year ever. It's literally like my best trading year ever in existence as a retail trader. I am telling you. SPCE, OMG. See, it's so many things that we need to watch right now. And I'm like, oh my God, I only have two hands and a keyboard. Okay, so if you guys took the trade into Russell, you could, if you want to choke the trade because we're developing a little doji on the five minute, um, if you want to take some profits uh, and, or if you would like to trail 1489 for the day trading portion of it, 1489. Okay, and that's a really nice day trade. Let's see if it starts going uh, higher. We should be seeing 1500 if the velocity is starting. Uh, now, all we need to see is this five minute rotation in NASDAQ for the price to continue higher. Uh, YM here, I love it. However, <sighs> yeah, this is it. This is the stop below seven, uh, seven, 720 would be the stop. 720 would be the stop. 
Okay. Whoops, I didn't release the trail. Okay. So official trail for those of you that are, uh, consider Russell as a day trade, 14.89 is your trail in Russell. Okay. 14.89 is your trail in Russell. We have oil up. If NASDAQ is going to trade over 945, we should see some more velocity into Russell and the Dow. Look at the space in the Dow here. I'm taking it, guys. I'm doing YM. YM long. YM long. 863. 863 for the entry. The stop is gonna have to be the 700 and I'm looking for a ballpark, ballpark target all the way into that purple line of 27,100. But in between, we do have some other targets. We have the 26,900. Uh, we have some other targets. 925, nine, it's 937, but I'm gonna put 9.40. 9.50. And the rest we're going to calculate as we go. Yeehaw, with Russell, baby. Uh, guys, trail 1492 for the day trade portion. Good job, everyone. Good job, everyone. So day trade portion, it's chunked in at 1492. Don't let it go below 1492. It's it's a day trade. It's not a swing. In and out, in and out, in and out. We're power trending on the 10 EMA. For those of you that want to apply a really tight choke, well, no, it's no, no. Leave it at 92, 1492 for the day trading portion of it. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go back to the five here. Come on, NASDAQ. Do it. Come on, NASDAQ. We're waiting on NASDAQ here. And once we get a pinch in NASDAQ, we're going to start pun punching higher. Okay. We need NASDAQ over this pot right here. We need to see a, uh, we need to see a print of uh, 943. And then we're going to go higher. Ninety two is holding so far. We have a hold in ninety three for the day trading portion of it. We have a hold of ninety three. Your choice, ninety two or ninety three for the trail. Now we need to see a print of ninety seven. Of course, Tony, can you see the post? Why shouldn't I be in YM? I'm doing all the work. Why shouldn't I be in YM? It, tr it triggered at A63. Stop 700. You have the targets. All right. We're seeing the print in NASA. We should be going higher. All right, guys. Everything is super fast this morning. Super, super fast. Come on, 900 baby target. We're just about into target one, guys. Just about in target one in the Dow. Come on, Russell. One more punch. One more punch. One more punch.
All right, NASDAQ is doing it. It's helping us. Come on, Russell, hold the 93s. If we're getting a punch over 97, we're gonna move the stop to 93 in Russell. Okay, target one achieved in the Dow. Remember guys, as you're hitting targets, if you're using multiple contracts, scale out into targets. Always scale out into targets. If you wanna hold the entire position, I'm trailing it for you. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We need to see more pressure. We need to see a print of 1497 and Russell and we're going, we're going, we're going, we're doing it. Come on. Hey, John, no, I have two active trader screens. That's how I trade. I'm not going back and forth. Boeing, massive move to the upside. Gorgeous, Disney as well. We're getting uh, really nice, fluent moves from the stocks. Very nice, very nice. Okay, let's see if Russell is gonna start making it above 97 on the print of 97. Nope, they're pulling back right now. Let's see, Momo is down a little bit, volume down a little bit. A little bit of divergency here. Okay, Russell, just the day trading portion of it. RTY, uh, trail 1493 right now, 1493 and out. Okay, 1493 and out. All right, made a low of 1493.4, four ticks away. Let's see if 1493 is going to hold. NASDAQ hit resistance at a 960 zone and that's why it's pulling back. We're getting uh, back into uh, the retest area in the Dow, not adjusting anything into the Dow. I just took half the profits off at 900 for my side. Uh, like I advised everybody to scale out into targets, it hit, uh, it hit our first target and now it's pulling back. We need to see a rotation before we get anything going on again. Let's check out here. Uh, if you desire, you can actually, so um, as an alternative plan, and this is optional, whatever you wanna do, so you have the option, obviously you have some profits into 26,900. If you took some profits into 26,900, if you, if you wanna keep the stop at break even, that's fine. Cause you already made the difference from uh, that breakout point into the 862,900. So that will even it out into the eight, 880 or so an average. I decide to keep it all in. So I'm keeping my original stop in. And if I have another rotation, I'm gonna add back. Okay, so I'm gonna do pyramid trading right now if that should line up. All right, the swing portion of Russell is intact. Only the day trade portion, okay? Only the day trade portion uh, of Russell is at 93. Okay. So Russell, only the day trade portion. Okay, that was only the day trade portion. If you're keeping it as a swing, you should be looking for 1500. Okay, now we're done with Russell for the day trading portion. Keep it as a swing. Our focus goes right now only to the Dow. Like I said, I am maintaining my original stop in the Dow, not changing it not lifting it, not doing anything. If we should get another setup form in the Dow, I will add to it. So far, it's trying to do a one minute rotation here. 
with support into 860 and possible little breakout into 875 can go back into the 900. But I need a little bit of steeper pullback in order to add. All right, come on gold. We need gold to ramp up. Look at oil, guys. Wowee. Nice oil. Came back into our now support and zipping back up. Two minute rotation in YM. Have not added, like I said. The momentum has slowed down a little bit and no surprise here, it's 10 o'clock. Okay, it's 10 o'clock reversal time. We have very strong time for some 10 o'clock analysis. We didn't have time yesterday for the 10 o'clock analysis. We're trading into the highs, into the 10 a.m. highs, which is a pretty strong indication that if we're gonna start breaking these highs over 900, so any print one to two ticks above the 900, we'll send the price back into our next target areas, into the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and so on. Uh, we're going to be trailing the entire position for this, uh, and uh, as well, we're seeing uh, we're seeing Russell in sync with the Dow trading very close to the 10 a.m. highs, very strong, and we're seeing sideways, pretty sideways in many S&P. Has not managed, managed to make a new high for the New York trading session. It needs to take out the 32.74 in order to enter into a better velocity type of zone. I really don't like the way it is structured right now, so. Let's take it far back into the one hour. Yeah, it, it, it just, it's coiling at this pivot right here into the 65s. Uh, it definitely needs to break above this zone in order to expand higher into the next target of 80 to 88 area. We're seeing some pretty whippy price action into NASDAQ and there's no surprise there because it has a massive, it had a massive gain yesterday and in the overnight trading session. However, it did whatever it needed to do and it's bouncing off the support. Now it's very important for this support area to hold. And we discussed in the brain market game plan, the first level of support was 11,000. Uh, 20, and then we have a secondary level out of 11,000. This is the third level of support into the 900. This is also a confluence area. So it really needs to hold on and reshape its way back into positivity. All right, so the 15 minute, as you can see, first 15 minute inside candle with support back into the confluence area into the 10,900. In order to gain some more velocity, we need to see it trade over 10,961. So when you see a print of, um, uh, when you see a print of that 961, we're gonna have more velocity. However, it's gonna still be into a pretty difficult area because it needs to trade over 75 and 80 to gain uh, more velocity to continue higher for the rest of the trading session today. So momentum is changing a little bit right now. Uh, we're seeing Russell that is uh, taking a pullback. Now, remember, we're still having a massive, massive, massive momentum for the upside. So any pullback buys that are going to occur are going to be viable for us. Okay. They're always going to be viable for us, especially in this uh, structure. We're seeing uh, such a heavy flow of money 
uh, getting into the Dow stocks. It is ridiculous. And by the way, we did have Google today with a brand new high, but it's pulling back right now. We also had Microsoft with a new high compared to yesterday's close. And uh, we also had the Baba. Uh, Nvidia very shallow, still inside day. Netflix is sitting right on the uh, right on the twenty SMA. It had earnings last week. Is my top watch for another swing. Uh, Netflix uh, coiling very nicely for the last three days onto the twenty SMA on the daily. And uh, also the VIX are approaching the 200 SMA. And we had that discussion last week with the VIX coming back into the 200 SMA. That's kind of a little symmetry that we have going on right there. So the theme may be for a pullback once it hits that 20 SMA. So we're going to keep that on watch. The XLF in general, the sector is still very strong and consolidating very strongly. So XLF and financials are still very, very strong. So that means that we may get a continuation of the coil into uh, this E-mini S&P before it breaks down. Now, the velocity, like I said, into the E-mini S&P, uh, if you're looking for an additional trade going, I don't know, further beyond 1030 or so, uh, S&P may be a potential trade. Uh, the entry price for it would be 32 uh, 69 32.69, that would be the entry. And the risk for this trade is going to be uh, sloppy, but it needs to be 32.57. Uh, and you're going to look for a target into the high, a high of the day today, which is 32.73.25. Uh, and again, it's going to be a very asymmetric, uh, asymmetric trade. But once it gets over that 32.73.25 and it starts printing the 74s, it has more velocity to continue into the 80. So it's going to have a five point spot from 75 to 80 for the target, which is, which is very good, very constructive. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, brand new high for gold right now. So I am telling you, like my account right now is like in deep, deep, the deepest shade of green, <laughs> deepest shade of green. If I could say that it's just, it, it's just massively green right now. Okay. Um, yes, Dan, yes, absolutely. Yeah, you can do that. All right, we don't have any other re-entry opportunities here uh, into the Dow, but I definitely can see possible add back into the 26,900 and having to stop into the 860 or below 860, a little bit below 860. I'm not sure I'm going to add because uh, we're having a very divergent NASDAQ right now. Dow's still holding. Uh, don't forget that today at 3 o'clock or 3.15, uh, Pelosi will host a meeting with Schumer <coughs> and uh, others uh, in the speaker's office.
uh, NASDAQ is uh, messing up right now. I'm going through some Dow stocks right now. I'm not liking NASDAQ here at all. Don't forget in about 20 minutes, we have prime time trigger time. Prime time tr trigger time. Um, can I please have a quick sound check? Can I please have a quick sound check? Okay, thanks guys. I don't know, my internet was really goofy right now. I'm not displaying charts. And I don't know if it was my platform or if it was the, my internet. All right, no changes in the Dow. Garland, your thinkorswim is slow as well. I was getting delayed data. Now it went back to real time, but it does not populate the charts. Alex, yours too? Oh, think or swim. All right, we're getting the impulse back to the upside. Okay, I just got charts right now, which is ridiculous. All right, so the Dow and um, the Dow and Russell are trying to hang on. Mark fro Ninja has froze. Okay, trade station. Okay, yeah, David, back to normal now. I don't like when that happens. I I mean.
of course so uh keep in mind whenever there's something going on with the platform immediately go to your um um to your app to your cell phone app platform Oh, really? Okay, no cell phone app with Ninja. <laughs> Alex, as long as it's not violating any of, as long as it's not violating our stop, there's no reason why you should be cutting the trade. Just trade the chart, trade the chart. Like there's no bailing right now. You're taking yourself out of a trade. I, like I said, you can take the trade, you have to respect the stop. You stay in the trade until it achieves targets or until you get stopped out. Other than that, it's on auto autopilot. I'm going to answer some questions later, guys. I'm just very focused on charts right now. Uh, we have 10 minutes to prime time trigger time. Slow down in the momentum, some inside 30 minute bars right here, getting a nice lift in the Dow and all, uh, in the NASDAQ as well. See this nice pop right here. We need to, we need to see that sustained. See the 30 minute here, 30 minutes still robust.
If you're new to the trading room, remember that target one has the highest chance of achieving. So if you're, you know, a very small account holder, uh, you may want to chunk it out at, uh, at target one each and every single time until you grow your account and then you can follow along in the room. Patience, we have 10 minutes into prime time trigger time. Oscar, if there are going to be any re-entries for YM, that's what I'm looking for right now. Uh, CQG, is that an, I have no idea, what is that? Uh, Joel, you can use, okay, Joel is saying you can use CQG with Ninja or you just have to call them. Is that an app? Is CQG an app? I have someone else. Okay, okay, thanks so much, guys. It's a data feed, okay. Why I'm getting close to a five minute rotation, guys. Should I get it back to the five. Let's get it back to the five, back to the five on everything. Back to the five. All right, mini trade in, uh, mini trade in the Dow. If you guys are not in or took profits at 900 and are looking for a different trade, obviously I'm not going to do it because I'm already in. I'm not, this is not an ad for me here. Uh, however, this could be, again, a smaller type of trade. Uh, the entry would be 872, 26872, the stop 830, and you're looking for a target at 880 and back into the 900, okay? Contingent on you executing the trade only at the price that I mentioned the 872, okay? You don't take it here. You wait for the trigger. There's a reason why there's an entry um, trigger price, okay? Let's see if they're starting to settle into 1030. Thank you so much, Brian, for sharing it with the room. If you're looking for that secondary trade in YM, it's 872 by 830. Here we go. I'm gonna post it right here for you so you can see it. Targets into 880 and 900. I would have more confidence into it if the Dow is gonna start printing 960s. As long as the Dow is going to be trapped below 960, I don't think the market is going to go anywhere. Walmart continues to be very strong.
See, Myrna's dead, is not moving anywhere. And Johnson & Johnson is waking up. Financials are impressive today. Gold is incredibly strong, holding into the highs. Walmart, incredibly strong as well. 3M, Merck, Merck, again, relative strength. Another round of earnings tonight after the close. We have Snapchat. UAL, that's going to be interesting. Uh, TD Ameritrade is going to report earnings after the close as well. Interactive Brokers, COF. So again, financials are going to be front and center. All right, so see that five-minute rotation not working out in YM? Like I said, the big problem is, uh, is NASDAQ. If NAS NASDAQ needs to get over that 960. Let's go back to the 15. We're getting very close to 1030, which is prime time trigger time. Things may change into that spot. We have two more minutes and we're really heading fast into the prime time trigger time. No, Aaron, gold is just gorgeous. Gorgeous, very happy, very pleased with the price action, very nice. Okay, let's see if in NASDAQ was a run of the stops or what the case is here. We have regained the 20 SMA into the M and the SMP, and I would say kind of perfect timing on the one hour in ES. The Dow is trading right on the 10 EMA on the one hour.
1030. Let's see if we get some reaction here. Mm, a big volatile last five minutes was a bit volatile. I'm expecting the price to continue a little bit uh, into the low spot. Brad, it depends on how fast it's going to achieve targets. It should be a it should have been a day trade because it entered that volatility space, that velocity space over 860. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, sure. And I'll let you know, like I'm in the same boat. Honestly, I would like to see a five minute rotation. So we can add a little bit to the trade. I'm not seeing a good spot. One minute, one minute is very choppy. Higher low is going to be established on the on the two minute if it trades over 780 in the Dow. So we have the low and we could potentially have a higher low right here developing. Yeah, let's just wait and see. I don't like this bar right here. It came with, with velocity. This could have been a run of the stops just like it did in the in NASDAQ. They're, they're just flirting with support right now. So, uh, Brad, RTY is the only swing right now. RTY is my only swing in the indices. Okay, Michael is mentioning that Rhythmic is a much better feed than CQG. So, guys, I'm not using it. So, if it makes sense for you, I really appreciate your input. Okay, two minute rotation happening, 26,800 in, uh, in the prints. Three more minutes into the next five minute candle right here. All right, pretty good technical spots if they decide to, um, if they decide to advance here. Uh, I would like to see an inside possibly an inside five minute bar. So I'm not doing anything. I have my stop in. Took partial profits at 26,900. So right now I'm just waiting for a spot where I can possibly add. It's building up on um, getting above that 50 SMA and the 20 SMA on the five minute, which is good. We may possibly have new trades, day trades, possibly in Russell and in YM. I'm just waiting. Remember, we have a setup, we trade, we don't have a setup, we just wait. less than 30 seconds and I would really want to see the Dow close over 820. 15 seconds. Come on Dow, you can do it over 820. 10 seconds left. Five seconds left. Come on Dow, just one pinch into the 820s. Here it is. Didn't do it. Didn't do that close into the A20, which left it in a pickle. 
Okay, some inside bars here. These are prime scalping zones. Here's what I'm afraid of, of this five minute pattern. Uh, like I mentioned here, a trade idea based on this five minute rotation and it triggered and then it stopped. So because this stop here, okay, it means that the five minute is not reacting to the pattern. So they must have switched, you know, algos for the 15. So on the 15, we just have to wait, well, for about another 10 minutes or so, but we're getting our clue from the five still, five minute inside, five minute inside. I don't think they're ready yet. They're not ready yet. See, if we would have closed uh, above the 20, we would have went back up. Like degree of confidence, possible, maybe 85 Why I'm still holding that 10 EMA, it's defending it. The two minute is not very happy, the five minute inside. So what the smaller time frames are telling us right now is that we should not take any kind of action. So right now that breakout point in the Dow is 825 and at 830 we have resistance from the new york trading session all right news just came out suspect and fatal shooting at a new jersey judge home found dead fbi says all right I like this five minute inside bar here. I like it. It looks better in the New York trading session charts than it does here. Um, parameters. Well, you would have to, let's see if I'm going to add here. I, I'm not, here's the reason why I, I would love to add, but I hate the Dow here. Let's see if we can do it. 825 here it would be the ad between 825 and 830 let's let's see i i still didn't do it okay i just want to see how it handles that because the trigger would be 825 and at 830 there's heavy resistance so i don't know if it has the capability to run see if five minutes ago this close would have happened here i would have been all over it See, it went into that 30 and then it zipped down. Walmart 3M maintaining the strength, also Boeing maintaining the strength, Disney as well. <clears throat> By the way, guys, Roku just punched through target one and it's getting very close to our target two. <clears throat>
See, it's having a problem into that 30 spot right here. Oh man, this NASDAQ is not moving. <laughs> Come on, NASDAQ. Just do something here. Wow. Uh, hey, Ta. Um, 872 for, you mean 862? Oh, that was the trade. No, 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 no. Th that second one? No, not valid anymore. Not valid anymore. It's not into the same structure. Mm -mm, not in the same zip code. So that came with a tight stop that 872 to 830 or 835 as a mini, mini trade, as a mini trade. It's done. It's done. No. Right now, you know, Russell has a lot to digest into the 30 zone. And because we're having heavy divergency here in NASDAQ, uh, I'm going to look for very strong clues uh, to add to the trade. And so far, I don't have a very good spot to add. This is not, this is going to be painful here to uh, sit and watch and we're navigating way out of our uh, trigger times here. NASDAQ is the problem. See, this becomes a problem here with um, with NASDAQ coming in like this. Since it's a second layer of support without any kind of pullback, uh, without any kind of trigger, I'm sorry, without any kind of trigger. Well, we do have a lot of support um, from this, uh, from where it is trading right now, all the way into this confluence. This is a heavy confluence of um, 800.
We just need to wait for signs and the sign will come on a five minute here. Just gonna have to wait. Patience is key. Do not trade if you don't have evidence. Stay tuned, guys. Don't run away from trades. <laughs> mm. The 840 would be the ab zone in um, the Dow or a separate trade. It would be 840 by 765. Eight four zero is the entry. The stop seven six five seven six five. You have it posted right here. Target for this particular trade and for the ad, we're gonna look for eight seventy five. Eight eighty eight ninety and nine hundred. And then we're gonna if it trades over nine hundred, we're gonna be heading into the targets that um we mentioned when we called the first Dow tree. like this pulled back here into the 20 SMA in the US. Okay, we're getting ready. Fasten your seat belts, 840. It was just three ticks away from this high. Three ticks. To wait for it. Here we go. We're in. Fingers crossed. You know the technical term for this. <laughs> technical term. Keep your fingers crossed. Okay, we're going to look for 875. Let's go back to the five minute here. If we see in the Dow 10,900, uh, 10, we're ripping higher in all the indices. If you guys want, you could do the same thing with Russell for your swing trade. If you wish, you can add. I'm not going to add anymore, but 87.7 um, .7 is going to be your trigger, your next trigger point. Okay, your next trigger point. All right, we have the 850 that was hit. Now we need to get over the 60 back again.
High of 61. We need to break over that 60 again. Remember, our first trigger is 63. Okay? Our trigger is 63. And we have a better average right now. Come on, you need to get over that green line. There we go, there we go. We have a 64, almost 10 points into our target one into 75. 26 to 175. Once again, the targets are 26, 175, 26, 80, 26, um, uh, 26, 890. And we also have back into the 900. And then we're going to start, if we get it back into the 900, we have constructive five minute rotation in NASDAQ. And like I said, we, we need to see a, that pinch above that zone and that five minute rotation. And then we're going to start seeing the price go back up again. Still the high is 864. Here we go, guys. 875 right on the nose. So right now, our average and my average uh, is 852. If you have added to this trade, please post your average. 852 is my average. Good, good. You added early, Jonathan. Ooh, Aaron, <laughs> nice, nice, Brad, awesome. Awesome, guys. Okay, now you know, technical term, fingers crossed, fingers crossed, because right now NASDAQ is into resistance again. I would have loved to scalp NASDAQ. <laughs> NASDAQ would have been a fun one to scalp here. Okay, here we go, 78, we are two points from target number two. Okay, two points, we need the 880, and we're gonna do a happy dance. We, do, we, have, we need the 880, two more points. Come on, you can do it. See, there's still resistance into that, into that 880, and by the way, you know, that because NASDAQ is right into that resistance at 900 and 900 and change and freaked out, totally freaked out the Dow there. That's why I didn't punch that 880. There's such a strong correlation between price advancement and price decline. You have no idea. It, it is incredible. And by the way, today was a very hard market to trade. It was not an easy market. Everything was very rapid in the morning. So you had to be like, 
super fast. Uh, and you had to take into consideration this nasty divergency that we had from, uh, from NASDAQ. Well, let's go, I am, nothing to see here. We need to see it over, now we need to see a print of 80 and then we could see it start advanced to 90. Okay, chugging along, one more tick. <laughs> it just ticked into 79. Okay, now we need to NASDAQ to anchor into that 900 and not look back, not look back. <sighs> you know what, guys? I am looking right now. We're getting outside of our trigger times, and NASDAQ here is into a lot of resistance. Uh, there is support at 848. You know what? I'm thinking right now for this trade, it wouldn't be a bad idea to close it at break even. We're not getting a really great response from it. Hmm. See, support now is in 848, and we have our average in to be, I have it at 852. A lot of you guys have 853. We need, and the reality is that now we need to hold the 860s. So I'm starting now, I'm extremely diligent. Yes, Shay, I am into Russell still, into the swing. Yeah, let me know if you need any help with it. It's basically, you know, the entry is at the purple line and we have the support, which is right here. And it is a swing that we're looking to get into the 1530 ultimate target. Yeah, so Shay, right now, if you wanna take this as, uh, let's say as a, as a day trade, Okay, your trigger point was 87.8, 87.8, and the stop 1478. And you're looking for um, into the high day, uh, into this 94 to 96 for, uh, for targets. Oh, yikes, I don't like this. Uh, volatility that it's coming here and this jittery but i'm also monitoring the uh, uh the dow stocks and home depot is really strong but see what i mean we're not we're, we need to hold this 900 and we need to close within the next two minutes above 915 in the dow uh, i'm sorry in nasdaq see where i have my cursor we need to hold in, uh, we need to close into the 910 or 915 in order to have follow through in the Dow and into the S&P and all, all these indices. Okay, so I'm still holding on, still holding on to YM. So uh, we have 30 seconds and within 30 seconds, we need to see our 880 and then we could uh, put our trail stop and break even, okay? but we need to see 880 first. And if we don't see it, okay, we have 10 seconds. It's gonna pull back if it's not gonna do it. Three seconds, two seconds. All right. It needs to get right now into the 80s. Any second now. Here it is, right on the dot. Thank you, market. Thank you so much. I love it when the market cooperates. <laughs> love it, love it.
All right, we're getting continuation on the 15. One minute, very nice rotation. Two minute as well. <laughs> Greg, still amazing to see me do that. <laughs> All right, um, guys, let's move the stop to 8.50. <laughs> Amy, you were saying like, you know, the price is listening to me. It should. <laughs> Getting my whip out. All right, so guys, let's uh, trail it 8.55, 8.55, why am trail? 26855. Let's not let it go against us. It did what it did. It did it right on the dot. We waited for the 80. We had our full target into the 80. And in fact, we came very three ticks away from our target two into the 90. So we have to be very diligent in our in our trailing. So if it trades below 50, um uh if we trade below uh 855, it's gonna go lower. Joel. Costco, you just hold the uh, you just sold the call for 120. Awesome, do the happy dance, do the happy dance. I'm doing the happy dance. <laughs> awesome, Costco. I know, I know. It's like you know what? My head is like spinning <laughs> from all of these uh, all of these trades that we're in, plus managing a day trade. Totally stressful. <laughs> All right, so now we need to see it back into the 900. We're over the 90s. Uh, so now we need to see it back up again, back up again. And we're going to, hey, when we get into uh, 95 or so, we're going to start trailing again. But we need to see it over 94, 90, what do we need? 94, 95. Okay, 94, 95. And if we hit that 95, we're going to trail it. Trail it to 870, okay? I'm just posting it right here, but we need 10 seconds. Five seconds, three, two, one, trail 870. Trail 870. Wow, this is sweet here, okay? This is pretty sweet here. So NASDAQ needs, I'm telling you guys, if NASDAQ is going to print 916 right here, it's gonna, if it's gonna print a 916, this market is gonna go higher. If it's not gonna do it, we're gonna be trailing out of the Dow, which I'm fine, because we're outside of that trigger point, okay? We need 916 in the Dow for the market to start going. If the if NASDAQ is not gonna do that, the market is not going. Okay, market is not gonna go. <laughs> you enjoy trading like this? <laughs> okay, wacky trading. Okay, keep this stop at 870. I'm gonna be done with it. I'm gonna be done with it. And we're done for the day. We're done for the day. Okay, I like it. You know, when you establish a, 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 a routine for your trading and when you know that, hey, this is my plan, this is what I look for, you wait for it, you focus on it, you want to make sure that you have the right parameters. You don't want to stress yourself out the whole day. You're having a great trade party. We're having a great trade party. I would say so. We're having fun every day. I mean, tell me you're not, you guys are not having fun. We're having fun and making money. Okay, so here's the deal, guys. If the Dow is going to hit 894, we're going to start trailing a little bit tighter. Fun, fun, fun. Okay. Okay, we need to see a print of 94. 94 is what we need in order to start trailing a little bit tighter. 
And in the meantime, our trail is still 870. I cannot change it. Cannot change it. What's the time? All right. And in about, in about 10 seconds, right now in 10 seconds, we need to hit 92. And if we're not, Eighty-five. Here it is. Come on, you can do it. When we see the price over ninety-two to ninety-three, we're gonna start trailing tighter into the seventy-six or seventy-five. But not until then. We still have that eight seventy trail. Russell is doing good. We should be getting some more um, follow through because Russell is so strong right now. Russell is beautiful. And it held a New York trading session stop. You saw that? It held the New York trading session low, which is impressive. And remember what I said about e mini SP? E mini SP needs to trade above the 67. And if it doesn't trade above the 67, it's not going to work out. Okay, I don't want to get wiggled out in the Dow at 70, but there's more strength in coming in to little NASDAQ right now. Look at the divergency, guys. Remember yesterday we were having NASDAQ, ooh, NASDAQ, not good. Guys, we're out. We're out of YM. YM trailed out at 70. Okay, why am done? Here's the thing. Sometimes you're having big wins. Sometimes you're having small wins. Sometimes you're having break-even trades. And not very often we have stopouts, okay? So this was pretty good right here, okay? This was pretty good, pretty good. Okay. It was not worth um, holding it any longer. I'm still watching it. I'm still watching it right now. But we're done. We're flat. The only thing that we're in is Russell. And a Russell swing right now, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, let's put the stop and break even. Okay, for the swing. I, I, I don't know. I don't feel good about the price action in NASDAQ. Okay, so let's do Russell, RTY, stop at break even for the swing. Okay, stop at break even for the swing. Because if it's not going to hold above this purple line, it, it's going to go back down and it's going to chop around. It's going to really chop around. And we don't want that. NASDAQ is not cooperating one bit. Um, we're going to get to analysis uh, for the rest of the trading session in about uh, five minutes now. I'm just watching it closely here. Watching still this green line 
right here. I'm really glad that we added to the trade. Yeah, they're going down. We're going to get to analysis. Yeah, keep the stop, uh, the swing portion, the swing of RTY, keep it at break even. Do not let it go below the purple line. Break even. Break even is fine. I don't know. The market seems to be uh, the structure. See, it never triggered this 916. We need a 916 in NASDAQ in order to go higher in the Dow and in Russell. Okay, so today in the day trade in Russell, we made uh, 7.6 points. That's $380 per contract. We also had one trade in YM. The first entry was 26.863. And I, we took partial profits and hit our first target of 900. So we took partial profits into 900. But if you were in with only, uh, one contract, you would have made only seven points in the Dow, which was good because it recovered. And on the first, and then we had a secondary trade where we added to bring our average down. Uh, and my average was 852 because I added to the trade at 26840, which was a technical add based on a five minute uh, breakout. And on that particular trade, we made 30 points in the Dow, which was 150. So not bad for the training session today either. So really nice numbers. Have that nice pin here. See, structurally wise, Dow is still very strong and that's because the Dow stocks are incredibly strong. Awesome, Francis. Oh my goodness, that's awesome result. That's an awesome result. See what uh, what see what I mean about uh, these um, these stops that you you are applying here. Look at these wicks, guys. Look at these wicks. Look at these wicks. So now we have a pretty interesting structure because we have a low, we have a higher low, and in about. One minute. In one minute, we may have another higher low right here in about one minute, contingent on breaking uh, 875. So if we break 875 in the Dow, we're going to zip back up into 880 and uh, 890. So we hit two targets here. I didn't literally scale out for my ad here into the 80s and 90s. I didn't. I just kept the whole thing. And lately, I've been keeping the whole trade active through targets. Okay, so, so far um, we're, we're holding RTY at uh, RTY. So I'm gonna create an alert right here um, to make sure this is my break even price. Okay. Because if I'm not gonna sit in front of the computer all day to watch it, um, 
I also have uh, some alerts for my targets on my other screen. Okay, so let's talk about what we can expect for the rest of the trading session today. And I'm gonna bring the big chart, big chart up and we're gonna go one by one. Okay, we're gonna go one by one. All right. Wow, that is amazing, Jonathan. Good job. Perfect. Okay. Now, guys, I am um, transferring the screen. You should be seeing just one big fat chart. Okay, one big fat chart. Okay. Uh, definitely Dow, one of the strongest. This is a 15 minute chart. Okay. I'm going to zoom it out a bit into the 30 minute. The 30 minute had the rotation. Okay. The 30 minute had the rotation. But it, then it came back to retest the 10 EMA. I'm not taking the swing portion of the trade because I'm already in a swing. And I don't want to put that extra pressure on myself because I'm in a plethora of stocks. I'm in a plethora. So I don't want to add to the swing portion. Okay. So basically it's running off of this 30 minute rotation for higher. It's possibly going to see right now 900 back again. Like here it is 900. Man, is this news or something that punched it back up? Uh, okay. No. Okay. So apparently, for, uh, set, uh, yeah, no, no news guys. No news. Okay. Or it was some kind of news, but we weren't aware of, but we got the pinch higher. So the strategy that I applied, uh, into this uh, trade right here was to be able to take this 15 minute candle high for the ad and half the stop into the 70s. I did not want to hold, especially at this time of day, we're less than 10 minutes into the close of the London session and things become very whippy here. Uh, I'm fine with the results today. Uh, like I said, we, uh, we managed uh, to make some money into, um, uh, into the Dow today, uh, not a lot because our entry was 840 into this spot right here. We applied this and as soon as I saw a little bit of trouble getting back through this high, remember we punched through and we created that 94 and we waited, we waited forever and then we got the snap back to the downside. Uh, I didn't want to hold for the extra pressure. So on this particular trade here, we trailed out with 30 points. It's not a big deal, but hey, it's money and green is green. So that is about $150 per contract. Well, that's really good if you would have averaged a couple of contracts or a few contracts. That was a nice day as well. So on the first trade that we initiated this morning, we uh, took it uh, over this uh, heavy resistance line for velocity higher. Our entry was 863. We had a stop into the 700. We gave it a little bit of room because we were expecting uh, some stops to be, uh, to be run out right here. And then the pattern uh, reversed very nicely high. We had the pullback. So we lived through this whole entire pullback. And you can see that this is not, listen, volatility creates these really weird, oh, thank you so much, Erin. Okay, volatility creates uh, all of these really wide ranges and especially for day trading, okay? So that's why I'm very, very uh, uh, diligent about how I trail and how I see a spot to save my trace so not to have a negative effect and not to obviously, you know, have a loss. My biggest, uh, my biggest uh, uh, goal on the trading session is to try to preserve the capital that I have accumulated and to try to chunk out profits out of the market without tapping into my risk, okay? So this, in my opinion, this was a perfect management uh, here. It was very technical. And I think that, you know, um, probably, you know, they were waiting for this news to pop out. I know I read it yesterday. I didn't really know when European Union is going to, um, you know, vote on that recovery package, Aaron. So thanks for posting that. Uh, but all in all, I'm very happy with the results in the Dow. We averaged out 8.52 and we uh, trailed it out at 8.70. Not bad overall. So overall, not bad. Okay. 
Uh, now uh, let's get into Russell because we had another trade in Russell. We had a day trading portion and we still we're still into the swing trading portion. So just to recap on Russell, we had our first trade into the 1485.4. Actually, this was our entry right here. Oops, sorry. It was right here early in the morning. It happened super fast. And we already hit, you know, a plethora of target uh, in Russell above. And we trailed Russell with a really nice profit of 7.6 points for a day trade and only working two hours a day, less than two hours. Like, we're not kidding ourselves. We were done in a few minutes. And uh, uh, we trailed that at 1493, which was perfect. We still have the swing portion of it, right? And we initiate it at the same location. And I'm still in, I'm using, uh, I'm using a, a, a stop and break even, which means that I'm not using any of my risk. So I'm not tapping into my account to trade this trade, right? So my risk right now is zero for the trade, which is ideal. And we're gonna look for follow through into targets. And uh, remember that um, we're, when we're looking at Russell for, uh, for the bigger targets, we're looking at 1500. So we really wanna see that 1500 target and we wanna see it trade into target. We don't wanna squish it or we don't wanna really trail it tight. And uh, we're looking for 1520 and 1530. Remember that there is a, a huge inflection point into the 1536 and we may see the gyration start early. So into the 1530. So be very diligent uh, starting over 1500 or more 1510 or so if we get there. Uh, that is the spot where we're going to look to trail a little bit, uh, a little bit tighter. Okay, but other than that, this should be a trail if it starts going this should be a nice trail based on uh currently it's based on uh on a 15 minute okay so currently based on a 15 minute uh the way i see it first of all we don't uh we want to see the price advance and not look back and once it trades over 1500 we're going to tr uh, trail it by 15 minute pivots and we're going to see because here's the thing you know and russell if russell's going to start to go and if it's going to print uh, above this uh, candle high, 1495.3, uh, then we're going to be off to the races, okay? We're going to be definitely off to the races. This is the bigger ball, ballpark target with zero risk that we're applying right now. And you can see that we're trying to hold. Now we still have about 40 minutes into the top of the hour, but this looks very constructive. And I'm telling you, like, if we're going to start trailing, uh, trading over 14, nine, in the 1496, uh, the price is not going to look back. So we're, uh, we're safe with our trail stop. Okay. So two trades today, basically, um, uh, you know, two names that we traded today, uh, Russell and YM. Uh, also the m and &E SMP, m and &E SMP, like I said, I'm seeing some structural, um, um, strength into financials right now. Um, but it came into the 20 SMA and it went back up, uh, today, the story is going to be that if it trades over at 3267, it's going to go back up to 70, uh, 73 and ultimate target. We're looking for 33. So this could be a price advance because it has resistance at 3,300. It also has a little resistance here into the, between the eighties and 85 and, uh, 80 and 85. But if it trades over the 85, I think that 88 is not going to be an issue. Uh, also going into NASDAQ, which uh, was the he big headache today because uh, it uh, did not defend the first shelf of support, not the second shelf of support, but it came uh, into the third shelf of support, ran some stops, and right now is trying to strengthen up a bit. It was a more advanced index. It ran into all-time highs in the overnight trading session. It never pulled back. So from yesterday's trading session, and actually uh, yesterday we did have a trade in NASDAQ for about 50 points as a day trade, right? We're, we're not discussing these massive moves, but we did discuss yesterday the fact that from last, uh, last Monday, which, uh, last, what was last Monday? Was it the 13th? Yeah, it was a week ago on the 14th, exactly today, a week ago today on the 14th when it did this pin and this pin and meander, meander, meander. And uh, we did have that discussion. And I know some of you were discussing about, you know, this swing for hire and I gave you guys the stop and you have to respect the stop because if you don't respect the stop, I mean, what rules do you have in place? Like zero. Okay. So you can see that NASDAQ 
obeyed this pin candle. Obeyed it. Obeyed it. And once it traded above, this was the breakout point into the 700 yesterday. It was the same trigger point from last, uh, from last Wednesday. And it came in play into Monday. And price memory took it back into the high. You can see it right here. We went and we uh, really hit the old time high again. And then we gyrated. Why did we gyrate? Well, look at the price. If you're looking at the structure, look at this prior high right here. Okay, look at this wig. The meat of the candle is back here, right? So we came to revisit the 850. Why did price do that? Because definitely was way too extended, right? And in order for NASDAQ to sustain another like higher, it needs to have mandatory, it needs to have another uh, pullback in, in order to set up for the buy. I love NASDAQ on the 15 minute structure. If you wanna watch something for the PM session, this is something notable right here. Uh, so I know it's under a lot of pressure from this 10 EMA, but look, one, two, three candles. Right now, this is the fourth candle that is developing. So if you should have a pinch over 920, it's going to go to 950. So from 920, it's going to go to 950, and then it's going to go back up into a confluence level very close to the 70s, okay? And it's coinciding with this uh, 20 SMA right here. So it's going to be 50, 70, right? So you're looking for a break above this high right here. Okay, look at this high and the exact high is 15. So anywhere above the 15, anywhere above the 15 and 20 is acceptable entry. You can look for a projected target into the 70 and uh, 70, uh, into the 50 and 70 with a stop below the 50. And that's gonna be your target for the afternoon. You should not take it anywhere in between those spots. Don't think that you can cheat the market. No, that's not gonna work out. All right, let's talk about our beautiful gold trade in here. Uh, gold is firming up. Take a look at the 15 minute, it came back to regain. What did it regain? The 10 EMA, remember we discussed this in class a lot of times, right? So power trending and right now is forming this really beautiful cluster. And I have no doubt that if we're today, we're gonna start um, uh, pushing over 1844 back again, we're gonna hit, uh, we're gonna hit uh, uh, 1850. So 1844 is the price that we need to uh, um, uh, see today and uh or in the overnight trading session it really doesn't matter but it has a very nice structure and then we're going to see our target into the 850 and if you still want to hold it for higher like i said I, I wouldn't choke it right now with a stop although you know you can trade potentially 1835 okay you can trade 1835 which would be the bottom of this pivot coinciding with this uh uh with this 20 sma so that would be, I'm not into the trail mode just yet. I think it's just starting to go again. But if you want a trail, you can use the 1835.5 or 1835. This is a really nice location. All right, uh, one more. And this is the CL for us. And uh, um, CL, I know some of you guys are into this trade. Like I said, I'm not going to comment much because this is really for big, big, big accounts. This is a bigger breakout area over 41.10. We discussed it in yesterday's trading session. We had this level. It happened in the overnight. You can see it right here. It happened at 3 a.m. When, when the London session has opened and progression higher. So we have this level from yesterday's trading session, right? And we have the support here, $40. We discussed about the fact that you need to give it a room, right? We need to, you need to give it a wiggle room is not, the stop is here. If the support is here, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to place the stop right at support. That is the, the biggest no-no ever, okay? You've got to give it the wiggle room. And then again, it's running into targets. Uh, we, discussed, uh, we discussed that. It also has targets into the 42s, 43s, and all the way into the 45. All right. Any other names or any other, uh, any other um, commodities or anything that you guys are watching for the PM session? Uh, just let me know and I'll, I'll go through them. Okay. If not, this is a wrap guys. This is a major wrap. Another fantastic trading day today, uh, in the room and, uh, silver S I. Okay. Let, let me just put it here instead of Russell here. 
And Russell, uh, we're going to use the private feed to update you on that trade, but that is a swing. It's ongoing. I'm hands off. I'm in the trade. I love it. It's a break even stop. What, what else can you ask for? All right. Silver. Uh, silver. Okay. We discussed silver on Monday. Okay. Yesterday. Here's the projection. Remember what I said yesterday that if it trades over $20 and 26 cents, it's going to go straight here. I didn't have an entry and I'm in gold. Okay. All right. Happy bull trader, trend follower, money man multiplier. I love your name. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so yeah, silver is going to run into this target right here. This is the extension target, 22 bucks. Francis, great job today. Great, great job. Uh, stop G dot. Okay. G D O T. Okay. G dot. Uh, tell me, you're long, you're short. Uh, what are you looking to accomplish with this trade? <laughs> All right, so uh, here's what I see in the stock. All right, it's, it's just getting going. It had hit resistance from this prior pivot high right now. Uh, and if it's digesting and coiling between 47 and 52, it's going to start moving higher. Uh, here's the thing. $53 is also going to be a pressure point, but if it trades over 53, it has a pretty nice open void to about 55 and 56 from the weekly structure. Wow. Nice coil here. Um, it was present on the weekly chart as well. So very nice. Uh, if you're in. Um, okay. If you're in, uh, 47, 90, uh, stop is holding. It's also above the 200 SMA. So it looks very good for a continuation higher. Very good. In fact, what you can see right here, even from the weekly chart, it's running into this prior resistance, right? So that's why it's just, uh, you know, hovering here and it has been holding here for one, two, three, three weeks and about two days right? So it needs to trade above this high. So this week, okay, here's what you can do this week. If it prints 52.55, you're off to the races and your next target is going to be 53.80. Your second target is going to be 56.26. And then you're going to get into another target at 59.50. Okay. Does that help Aaron? Let me know. Okay. Uh, yeah, daily, not, uh, yeah, daily, I would, yeah, weekly. So it's good for hire, good for hire. Calls, calls, calls. All right, anyone else have any other names or uh, anything that uh, you need help with? Just punch it in here. And guys, this is a wrap. Again, another fantastic day with us. Yay, happy Mark. I'm happy too. Oh, I cannot tell you how happy I am. <laughs> Very happy. <laughs> All right, let's go back to RTY here. RTY. All right, we're back into the 90s. Okay, let's take it back to the 15. Okay. All right, keep that stop flat. <laughs> Thanks, Ivar. Thanks for Keish. Thank you, everyone. Guys, I'll see you tomorrow at 8 o'clock. Uh, don't forget that tonight, if you're new to Trade Out Loud and the new Trade Out Loud methodology, if you're here on a special one day pass, or if you're here, you know, if you have just signed up for, uh, you know, the trading room, if you want to find out more about how to set up your computer, how we're hosting a three day uh, marathon. Um, all about futures and you have received the email and if you haven't just shoot me an email and I'll send you a copy. We're going to talk about futures, what you need to do to become successful into trading futures and it's not rocket science. Trading is not hard if you respect the rules. Okay. You have to respect the rules. For instance, when you're in a trade and this topic came on uh, today, uh, if you're in a trade and as long as the stop is not being violated and you're in the trade, there's no reason for you to uh, to exit the trade, okay? There's no reason. The trade should be on autopilot. You don't just go in and out, in and out, in and out. Just just let it trade, you know? That's that's what it does. All right, guys, this is a wrap. Thanks so much. I'll see you tomorrow uh, in the trading room at 9 o'clock. Enjoy the rest of the day. Bye.